This question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and the question asks which of the following variant of PCR can amplify small amounts of target DNA in a sample contaminated with other DNA and your options are arbitrarily primed PCR, multiplex PCR, nested PCR and real time PCR. Now we all know that polymerase chain reaction is a very very high yield uh, topic for a PG entrance examination. So let's look what is polymerase chain reaction in a little detail and then we will look at the various modifications of polymerase chain reaction and then we will look at the final answer of this question. So what is polymerase chain reaction? Basically it's an amplification technique. What is an amplification technique? Basically you have small amount of DNA and you want to measure you know to amplify that DNA to measure that DNA. For example let me give you an example. Suppose a patient comes okay to you and you have to test him for hepatitis but the viral hepatitis DNA would be very very in a small quantity so you to make it measurable you will have to amplify the quantity right originally from the patient's blood if you take the sample of viral DNA may be very less so if you amplify it then you are able to measure and then you are able to you know say that viral DNA is present or not and make your diagnosis so these PCR or polymerase chain reaction is a type of amplification technique and this amplification simply means multiplying the amount of DNA. If we talk about amplification techniques now polymerase chain, rea chain reaction is one of the amplification techniques. There are so many other amplification techniques which have come and they all have different principles but primarily the classification of amplification techniques a lot of MCQs have been asked. So let's me take you through the classification of amplification technique. There are two ways by which we classify this amplification technique. One is by thermal method and one is by multiplication fold method. When we talk about thermal method, there are two different types of you know amplification techniques. One is there is thermal cycling methods. Okay, in this what happens? The temperature of the uh, of the cycle keeps on increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing in a cyclical matter. And polymerase chain reaction is one of the thermal cycling method. Isothermal cycling means the amplification happens at a constant temperature. Okay, so based on the thermal cycling method, we have got polymerase chain reaction and ligase chain reaction. Both of these are thermal cycling method. What do I mean by thermal cycling method? We will see the thermal cycler in the that the temperature increases, again decreases, increases, decreases. So it goes in a cyclical manner. Whereas NASBA and BDNA, both of them are isothermal cycling method, which means the temperature of the of the cycler is constant throughout the amplification technique okay now based on the multiplication what is being multiplied we can further divide it into target multiplication or amplification probe amplification and signal amplification what does that mean in target amplification the target dna for example in the example which i have given you that you are amplifying the viral dna itself okay so that is called as a target amplification what is probe amplification so to identify the target we create probes okay or primers if the probe or the primer is amplified then that is called as a probe amplification technique and signal is just simply the signal which is generated by attachment of probe to the target if that is being amplified then that is called as a signal amplification technique so what are your target amplification techniques PCR and NASBA nucleic acid sequence based amplification technique so PCR and ampli NASPA both the target DNA is amplified LCR and Q beta replicates in both the probe is being amplified now when I'll show you the technique then I'll uh, you know uh, discuss in detail and when B DNA is a signal amplification technique so very simple questions like which of the following is a signal amplification technique which of the following is a isothermal signal amplification technique which of the following is a thermal cycling method of amp DNA amplification such kind of questions have been asked multiple times so that's why this table is very very important once again I'll take you so you can classify based on whether the amplification happens in a cyclical thermal manner so temperature increases remains constant decreases again increases so that ways or when the amplification happens at a single temperature so based on that we have thermal cycling and isothermal thermal cycling is polymerase chain reaction and ligase chain reaction isothermal is NASBA and BDN.
when we talk about what is being amplified. So the target DNA may be amplified, the probe which we send to identify the DNA that may be identified or the interaction of the target DNA with the probe, the signal which is generated by attachment of the probe to the target that may be uh, you know amplified and based on that you have polymerase chain reaction NASPA uh, you know for target amplification, for probe amplification, LCR and Q-beta replicates and for signal amplification we have got B DNA amplification technique. Now having learned that let us learn about polymerase chain reaction and then we will see. So polymerase chain reaction first of all we have the template DNA and the template DNA we give some temperature okay and it causes denaturation of the DNA. So both the strands of the DNA will separate. Then what is going to happen is then the next step is annealing. Okay, so we bring down the temperature and what will happen is these probes or primers will get attached to the target DNA. Now here remember it is this design of this probe. So whatever probe which you are designing or primer which we are designing this is what is specific to the target DNA. So if the target DNA is there, then only it will get attached. If the target DNA is not there, it will not get attached and amplification will not happen. Let's assume that the target DNA was there, the probes or the primers got attached and then what will happen? Extension. So with the help of DNA polymerase, this entire you know DNA strand will be you know made. So what happened? You started with a single double stranded DNA and now you have got two double stranded DNA. And imagine we are again going to the same step. So again, we will denature it by giving temperature we will reduce the temperature that will lead to attachment of the probes or the primers and then extension will happen so from one we had two then from two you will have four four to eight like this the amplification will happen and based on the number of cycles you are amplifying is it clear so this is your polymerase chain reaction now as i told you you can see here for denaturation you have to increase the temperature for annealing you have to bring the temperature down and then for extension again further down again for the next cycle of denaturation again you have to increase the temperature so this is an example of thermal cycling clear so in isothermal cycling there will not be increase and decrease in the temperature the reactor temperature will remain the same another thing is if you see the whole target dna is being amplified so that's why it's a target amplification technique. In some other technique, you will see that the entire DNA segment is not being amplified. Only the probe gets amplified. Okay. Example in ligation reaction. But remember, PCR is a target amplification technique. NASBA is a target amplification technique. Very frequently, they are going to ask you these questions. Now, let's look at another very frequently asked question on polymerase chain reaction is, what are the things required okay or the checklist for uh, polymerase chain reaction so we require the target dna okay we re require the deoxy ribonucleotides okay deoxy ribonucleotides for this extension to happen we require the primers or the probes okay then we also require something called as tac polymerase what is TAC polymerase? Now, this is a very favorite question for examiners. TAC polymerase, if you see, for denaturation, the temperature will go very high, up to 90 degrees Celsius, and most of the enzymes will get deactivated. TAC polymerase is a polymerase extracted from, from a, a bacteria which stays in the hot springs, ther uh, uh, thermos, Thermophilus aquaticus, okay? And because it stays in the, uh, you know, hot springs, what happens? Its polymerase is adapted to hot temperature. So it does not get, uh, you know, denatured at high temperature. So that TAC polymerase is required. And then KCl and magnesium chloride, you know, for the extension. So these are the requirements of uh, polymerase chain reaction. And remember, TAC polymerase has been very, very frequently asked. Okay, so this is your polymerase chain reaction. Now, the last part of the session, what are the variants of polymerase chain reaction? So, first thing you realize that with the help of polymerase chain reaction, we can only and only amplify DNA. What about if you want to amplify RNA? Okay, so that technique is called as reverse transcriptase. PCR also called as RT-PCR 
you must have heard this word related to covid because covid was a you know rna virus so for so what happens using rt uh, reverse transcript is we convert any rna into copy dna okay using reverse transcript is and this copy dna using our pcr technique we amplify okay so this is called as reverse transcriptase pcr also called as rt pcr Okay. So, with this you can measure any kind of RNA, mRNA, tRNA, whatever expression you want to measure, ribosomal RNA, all that RNA you can measure. So, that is the first modification of a PCR. The second thing you realize that you are only amplifying the target DNA, but you don't have a quantitative analysis that how much initially you know the DNA was there. For example, let's say a patient came for viral hepatitis. Yes, you established a diagnosis or an HIV patient, you established a diagnosis that the patient does is positive for the uh, virus. But suppose you have started the treatment, how will you know that the viral copies have come down or yes? So, quantitative analysis. So that modification which not only amplifies but also quantifies the amplification that modification is called as real time PCR or homogeneous PCR or kinetic PCR all are the name of the same uh, modification in which not only amplification but quantification also happens. So that is real time or homogeneous or kinetic PCR. Let us look at the third modification. Now imagine in that we have seen that there are only single target DNA which we are amplifying. Imagine if we have to simultaneously amplify multiple target DNAs ok. So that is called as multiplex PCR. We know all multiplex movie theaters at the same time multiple movies are being screened. So similarly, you know, if we want in a particular segment, for example, let's say we are screening a newborn, uh, newborn uh, for various disorders, okay, genetic disorders. So we have target uh, uh, probes for various different types of genetic disorder and all of them can be simultaneously, uh, you know, checked for. So that is called as multiplex PCR. Clear? So, multiplex PCR, we simultaneously look and amplify multiple target DNA segment. Now, the next variation is very, very interesting. Let me give you an example. You go to a crime scene, there is blood all around of the victim and then you expect that in that blood, maybe there is the uh, blood of the suspected uh, criminal. Okay. So, what is happening here? The target DNA the DNA of the suspected criminal will be very less as compared to total amount of DNA in that particular sample. Okay. So, you have to specifically amplify the target DNA that is the DNA of the criminal. Okay. So, here what is happening? There is a lot of DNA, but you specifically want to amplify a particular, you know, uh, target DNA. Okay. So, that modification, that modification is basically called as nested PCR. So, what happens is what we do is we use multiple PCR uh, you know probes. So, first we amplify for outer probes and then we amplify using inner probes. So, we will not go into too detail but I hope you understand nested PCR we use outer probes inner probes to you know amplify small amount of DNA in when the DNA has in is in the contaminated with larger other DNAs. So, that is called as nested PCR. So, first we amplify using outer primers and then the target DNA we amplify using inner primer. So, that is nested PCR. The last PCR technique or uh, you know the modification of PCR technique is arbitrarily primed PCR. Okay. So, what is arbitrarily primed PCR? For example, let me first give you a use case that you are going to test the effect of a chemical on let us say grasshopper. So, if does it does this chemical cause some mutation in the grasshopper or not? Now, that is the problem. You do not know what kind of mutation you are expecting. So, you cannot design a probe properly for that particular mutation. So, what you do is you use arbitrarily primers or arbitrarily prone, uh, probes to look for any kind of ch changes in the DNA. Understood? So, these are when you use arbitrary primers. Okay. So, these are random primers. This is also called as randomly 
primed PCR. Okay, so we are using randomly, so the, the reproduci reproducibility will be less, but in that state, you only want to see if there is any change which is happening in the target DNA or not. Okay, so that is arbitrarily primed PCR and it has primarily used in a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what you called a lot of research where you are not very sure that what is the, what should be your design of primer. Once you have seen any change, then you can specifically design primers for that and then you can go for your regular PCR. So this is your arbitrarily primed PCR. So these are the modifications. Lots of question on PCR has been asked on PCR about the technique has been asked. The classification of amplification technique has been asked, you know, the requirement of PCRs, what are the various requirement of PCR has been asked. Then they, you have, obviously there are multiple questions on variants of PCR and all those questions are very easy to answer provided you have looked at this uh, particular lecture. So let's look at the answer. So we have seen arbitrarily prime PCR. It's basically when we, uh, you know, amplify a particular uh, you know DNA segment without having stringent primers we have arbitrarily primer or random primers multiplex PCR yes this is when we I, when we want to amplify simultaneously multiple DNA segment nested PCR yes this is the correct answer where we amplify a small amount of target DNA in a sample contaminated with other DNA so the correct answer is the real time PCR we know it is primarily for amplification and quantification at the same time so the correct answer is C in this case and if you have made up till this far I hope you have subscribed to our channel and you know please do share these videos these are MCQ series absolutely critical must know MCQs with detailed explanation so that not only you know the MCQ but you know all the concepts related to MCQ.